JBN will keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones. Before we get into the news, please remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and to share the news with someone today. Now on to the news. Hunt on for escaped St. Mary prisoner. A man on to Sunday for 31-year-old O'Shane Scott, otherwise known as Chin Chin, who escaped police custody at the St. Mary Parish Court on Friday. Scott, who is of Manchester Lane, Cox Street in Port Maria, St. Mary, was scheduled to appear before the Port Maria Circuit Court to face charges of attempted rape, larceny, assault of common law, and unlawful wounding. The Jamaica Constabulary Forces Corporate Communications Unit, CCU, says at about 9.05 a.m., Scott was being escorted by a police corporal from the restroom back to the holding area. During the escort, he reportedly assaulted the corporal and managed to flee through the main gate onto Warner Street. Despite immediate pursuit by officers on duty, Scott evaded capture and remains at large, the CCU said. The corporal was subsequently taken to the Port Maria Hospital and treated for injuries sustained during the escape. Scott, who has been in custody since February 21, 2024, is also wanted in connection with a threat warrant. The police says known to have a small tattoo on the right side of his neck. Anyone with information on the whereabouts of Scott is being urged to contact the police at 119, Crime Support 311, the NIB tip line at 811, or the nearest police station. Manchester farmer dies in crash near funeral home. A farmer died as a result of injuries he sustained in a crash on the Seed Main Road in northeast Manchester on Friday night. The deceased has been identified as Marlon Graham, otherwise called Trollops, a resident of Silent Hill in Manchester. Preliminary reports are that, at about 8 p.m., Graham was driving his motorcycle on the main road when, upon reaching the vicinity of Bell's funeral home, he collided with a Toyota Axi motor car. The impact flung Graham from the motorcycle onto the roadway. He died at the scene. Residents who gathered at the scene claimed that the Axi was being used to transport an injured person involved in another accident to hospital when the fatal crash took place. A man who identified himself only as Indian said moments before the crash he interacted with Graham. He work hard. No man has silent till work hard like this man. In a farming. And this man loved the Labour Party too. So everywhere we are going to Jamaica, in the fan, if I may only spike him, I ride and follow him. And since 19 come around a Vernica, bar, and beg me a thousand alarms, I'm going have it. And he said, give me 500, I'm going have it. He said, give me 200, I'm going to give him. I know I can look for him body in the room. So you know, you see a small cash on a glass and that the carryman they are carry. The crash into the people they go to the hospital and go and crash again. Eh? Graham is the third fatal crash in Manchester in just over a week. Last Monday, retired police sergeant Lancelot Lambert, 73, otherwise called Robert, died in a two-week crash in Mandeville, while last Thursday, Robina Hall, 50, otherwise called Bina, died after being mowed down in a reported hit and run at Lindo Hill in Manchester. All is said to have been mentally challenged. Jamaican man sentenced to seven years in the TCI. Andre de Souza, otherwise called Kili Kili, a Jamaican man who was arrested on gun-related charges and an immigration violation of the Turks and Caicos Islands, TCI, was sentenced to seven years in prison by TCI Supreme Court on Tuesday. The Royal Turks and Caicos Islands Police Force were investigating an incident in which the souls had reportedly inflicted knife wounds on another man. On September 21, 2022, when they were about to apprehend the souls, he pulled a gun on them. The police still managed to take him into custody and retrieve the gun, a loaded Taurus Millennium G2 9mm pistol with its serial number erased. It was charged with possession of the firearm and the ammunition linked to the weapon. At the time of his arrest on the gun charge, de Souza was on bail for a 2022 wounded with intent charge following a stabbing incident. That matter is believed to be drug-related. After that second arrest, it was discovered that he had overstayed his time on the island by more than three years and was stopped with the immigration violation charge. At his sentencing hearing on Tuesday, the TCI Supreme Court noted that the offenses were serious. It handed the source a seven-year sentence for carrying a firearm, seven years of the ammunition, and two years imprisonment for overstaying leave to remain in the country. The sentences will run concurrently. The court stipulated that, at the completion of his sentence, the source is to be deported to Jamaica. De Souza escaped a 12-year sentence as a legislative amendment to increase the maximum sentence for gun convictions from 7 to 12 years was made after he was charged. $30 million drug bus in St. Anne. The St. Anne police have detained two men, including a Bahamian national, in connection with a drug bus on the Prairie Main Road near St. Anne's Bay earlier this morning. Deputy Superintendent Ron Elliott 
acting commanding officer for the Central Police Division, reported that, at about 4.20, a police team was conducting an operation along the highway when they spotted a truck approaching, followed by a tractor. He said the drivers of the vehicles were signaled to stop, they complied, and when the truck was searched, the police discovered that it contained several parcels of ganja. The truck contained several parcels of compressed ganja, estimated to weigh over 3,000 pounds. The Era 2 FNID was informed and is conducting investigations. DSP Elliott said the seizure is valued at $30 million. The police also seized a 55-gallon drum of oil that was being transported on the tractor. 17-year-old among three arrested in viral schoolboy beating case. The Jamaica Constabulary Force DCF on Friday confirmed that three people, including a 17-year-old, whom they seized the main suspect, have been arrested in connection with the beating of a young male student from Hope High School, which was captured on video and widely shared online. The young men arrested are reported linked to volatile communities in Hanover and St. James. The teenager has been charged with assault occasioning bodily harm. The JCF in a press release on Friday did not say whatever the others arrested have been charged with. According to the JCF, the Wednesday afternoon incident involved a 15-year-old complainant who was reportedly walking home from school. Lawmen say the 17-year-old accused, along with several other students, allegedly ambushed the young boy behind a church in the vicinity of the Orchard community in Hanover. It was reportedly kicked in the head, neck and back, and was repeatedly slapped. Police say this was the second incident, as the complainant had been ambushed at the same spot by the 17-year-old and others two days earlier. The police added that under threat from the accused, the 15-year-old boy remained silent until Wednesday's incident, which was captured on video and went viral. The 17-year-old is scheduled to appear before the Lucy family court on December 3. Detectives from the Air One police are actively searching for two other suspects believed to be involved in the incident. They are calling for the public's assistance in finding the others who were allegedly involved in the incident. Trinidadian wanted in the U.S. arrested in Jamaica. A Trinidad and Tobago national wanted by prosecutors in the United States of firearms trafficking has been arrested by the local police. The police report that Shem Alexander was arrested earlier this month at the Norman Mann International Airport based on an extradition request from the United States government. When he appeared in a corporate era court, he consented in writing to be extradited to the U.S. to stand trial. He is wanted by the United States for leading a transnational criminal organization that acquired firearms, ammunition, and firearms accessories to export from Florida to Trinidad and Tobago. Alexander is the managing director of Gateway International Athletics. He is a former football player in Trinidad and Tobago. Two charging heart in a state trust fraud probe, the major organized crime and anti-corruption agency MOCA as charged of the three people arrested in Friday morning's targeted operations in Montego Bay, St. James, and Portmore, St. Catherine. The raids were part of MOCA's investigation of a $17 million fraud scheme and covered at the Hart and Estate Trust. Those charged are Simois Ellis, a former Hart and Estate Trust employee of a Gregory Park, Portmore address, and Kavina Atkins, another former employee and resident of Salt Spring, St. James. Ellis was charged with large sense of servant, possession of criminal property and conspiracy, while Atkins was charged with the offences of receiving stolen property, possession of criminal property, and conspiracy to defraud. The two are to appear in the St. James Parish Court on Wednesday, December 4. Friday's operations, which started around 5 o'clock, involved MOCA agents and operational support from the Jamaica Constabulary Force. The exercise reportedly hit the electronic devices and other evidentiary items on both locations. It is expected that other targeted and coordinated operations will be carried out by the MOCA team in the coming days. Director of Communications at MOCA, Major Basil Jarrett, said the agency has been tracking the case for some time. The persons involved are suspected to have collected monies um, that were not due to them through the Heart Trust NSDFB. And one of the individuals is a former employee. It's something that, you know, we, we're... We're concerned about because we the Heart Trust is a very valuable and important institution in Jamaica. Anything, whenever money leaves that entity that should really be going to persons who really need it, um, it just makes the crime that more egregious. In a statement on Friday, Education, Youth and Skills Minister Dr. Dana Morris Dixon said the investigation was initiated by the Heart and Estate Trust, which called in MOCA in 2018. I'm aware of some investigations that culminated in some raids this morning by 
MOCA. And I'm told that this relates to an investigation that Hart initiated in 2018, where their internal auditors found some anomalies in relation to a program. And they actually called in MOCA and asked MOCA to investigate, which is really good because it shows our governance working. In addition to that, the government is very committed to stamping out corruption. And so I'm very happy to hear that after their six year investigation, MOCA felt that they were able to pick up some individuals today. And we truly hope that we'll be able to get to the bottom of this situation so that we can send a strong message that anyone who wants to engage in any corruption in any of our entities, that they will be dealt with. The Ministry of Education has said it is cooperating fully with the MOCA in its investigation of the multi-million dollar fraud scheme uncovered at the Trust. DPP blindsided by NEPA trade winds deal, the song of the confidential deal between the National Environment and Planning Agency Nepal and trade winds citrus limited over the pollution of the Rio Cobre has deepened with the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions disclosing that it was blindsided by the secret arrangement. The deal was struck without the knowledge of the court or the ministry. NEPA had taken the company to court for an oil spill in the Rio Cobra in St. Catherine in December 2023, but it was announced in the St. Catherine Parish Court on Wednesday that NEPA intended to withdraw the charges. An attorney for the agency informed the presiding judge that the regulator, the Natural Resources Conservation Authority, had reached a settlement with the company. Claudia Thompson, acting director of public prosecutions, said NEPA had reached out to our office last month seeking guidance on how to proceed. But she said, before guidance could have been provided, she heard through the media that the matter was disposed of in court. She said her office will reconsider how it treats legal cases involving Nepal. The acting DPP said her office still has an interest in pursuing the criminal matter to find out exactly what transpired. Accordingly, she said her office had written to Nepal again on Friday, asking for the relevant material, stressing that the prosecution has a right of appeal, and therefore, it was important to determine whether this was one such case. Accordingly, she said her office had written to Nepal again on Friday, asking for the relevant material, stressing that the prosecution has a right of appeal, and therefore, it was important to determine whether this was one such case. We wrote again today, asking for the material. Remember, the prosecution has a right of appeal, you know. So is this, is this one matter that we should be looking at an appeal? I don't know. I don't even know how they arrived at the position they arrived at. I've heard through the media that there was a, what is it called, a, Secret deal. JBN will keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.